Hey, how you guys doing? This is William Myers from Manus Outdoors, and today we're going to be doing some improvised fishing hooks, some gorges and things like that, so you're not going to want to miss this one. All right, guys, so what's going on right now with this stick is we're going to make a, a gorge out of it. We're just going to make one. This stick could make a lot, but I like to keep my stick um, long at first so I have something to hold on to just for safety. And then just kind of start out by trimming this up a little bit. You know, the great thing about this uh, LT Wright Great Plainsman is you can take that back of that just like that. It's a great bark scraper. It's like a bark hook, man. It takes a lot with it. A little knot. Get all that bark off of there. You know, there's some people that leave the bark on for their gorges. I don't Depends on what kind of tree I'm working with. This is gonna be a really big gorge. I don't make them this big, but for filming purposes, so you guys can see what's going on, I'm gonna leave it rather big, but if, it, if I was actually gonna apply this, I would want this to be a little bit smaller. Sturdy, but still a little smaller. So we're gonna go ahead and start our first point. And I want this to be a really progressive point. I don't want it to come to right here and then make a point. I want this point to graduate from more behind the wood. Just keep turning it and run the ridges from your previous cut and once we start getting this thinned down then we can step up a little bit like we were cutting here go half the distance and start running your ridges again and that's going to give you one heck of a sharp point point. and like I said you're going to want these things to be a tad bit skinnier than that but you know just not rocket science just a point on one end now the more important part is the back of this and this one reason why I keep it kind of long is so I can work but now you're gonna have to make it short you're gonna have to be very very careful when you're making these <clears throat> because you don't want to cut yourself so I'm gonna go ahead and start right about here and just take this with my knife and roll it across the blade using my thumb that should give me a pretty uh, clean break if I just crack it once, out, in, up, down, like a cross. Just like that. A pretty clean break. Not completely, but cleaner if I just, cleaner than if I just broke it. All right, so I only want this to be about that big. This is the more difficult part. Exactly, it's holding on to this thing while you do this. Deal with that knot right now. There we go. You just kind of try to keep a hold of this as best as you can and start shaving it down. You know what? It's just, you know, just me making hundreds of these before I, I just I have to make it thin I already started the process it's just muscle memory but that's okay you'll be able to see what's going on here I'll tell you what what we'll do so you guys can see it really well is we'll make it a little long Alright guys, so in a nutshell, that is a gorge hook for fishing.
can be used in ice fishing applications. That's one of the reasons why I've showed it to you today. Now, one of my tips is to not leave this thing, I repeat, do not leave this thing smooth and round. Leave it so it's octagon, hexagon, what have you. As long as it is got some edges to it, you're going to have a lot more success. The line is going to grip to this thing a lot better. Now, stringing this thing up. You don't want to go directly right in the middle of this thing and string it up. That's why you want to leave this like hexagon a little bit. So you can come, like if this is the middle, we want to come back just a little bit. And the reason why we do that is because when we bait this, we're actually going to invert it. And then the line is going to be here. I'm going to string this up and show you, but I'm just showing you with my hands right now. And then grasshopper or worm or what have you goes on it just like this just like that line and all and then when something grabs a hold of this and pulls on it this stick turns inside the animal I've even caught turtles like this so let's string this up show you how it looks alright guys so what's going on right now is I got some number 36 bank line and I'm just kinda twisting it the opposite direction and getting it to basically unbraid itself and I only want one strand of this I carry some number nine for applications like this it is not with me right now I it's in my um, Roycroft pack frame that I did not bring with me because I'm just out on a day hike and don't need all of it doesn't matter because all you have to do is take one strand out of this number 36 and it's the same thing so when I'm stripping this uh, bank line out, I like to hold a piece of it in my teeth, get a nice run, and then hold that piece in my teeth. And then pull with my other hand while spinning it and keeping it straight in my other hand. So basically you need three hands, so you gotta use your mouth. And advance up a little bit. Funny story about doing that. Last year I, I had a, well I mean some of you that's been watching my channel for a long time know that last year I had a really long beard and uh, the stuff's springy when you're when you're uncoiling it, and I accidentally let it go. It coiled up into my beard, and it took like an hour to get un untangled. It sucked. But here we go. Here's our one strand of number 36 bank line. Let's tie this gorge up. So this is about a perfect example of a good time to use that constrictor knot that I just showed you in the last video. So all we gotta do is make an S. Let's go down a little bit. Make an S. Keep following around with the S. Make a figure eight. Grab the middle of the figure eight, and that's our knot. Just like that. Kind of get it snugged down a little bit and the loop smaller so it's easier for me to attach it to this gorge. Throw our gorge in there. And tighten it all the way down. This way, it is a very secure knot. This gorge isn't going to slip. And there's another thing this knot is flatter. Okay. Now we just trim the excess from this side. And what I would do is burn that in. So let's go ahead and do that now. All right, so don't go too crazy with this, but just burn that tar that's on there, get it melted. 
flatten it out. No, it's not going to go anywhere. You know, this, this tarred nylon cordage is great. I mean, it's made for fishing, guys. That's what the purpose of this is basically originated for. It's tarred mariner's bank line. They make nets out of it and stuff like that. It's not going to rot in water and things like that. All right, so here's our gorge that we just made. And like I said, it's offset a little bit. And you pull against the, the side that's offset, you pull it, the cordage. Let me step up here. Just like that. And then you bait whatever's going in there. Like I said, I've used grasshoppers and things like that before, worms. And you slide it all the way up until it comes to the other side of the gorge, if possible, as much as possible. At least you want to get this line tucked into the, your bait. So this is sitting in the water like this or floating like this. So when something grabs this and they swallow it, this needs to be smaller, guys. I made this long for filming purposes. This needs to be a little bit smaller. But when something grabs this and then you pull on it or it pulls against your set or whatever, this is going to turn in their mouth or in their guts and they're hooked they're not going nowhere all right guys so that's making a gorge out of wood or sticks so i have another way to make a gorge out of some more modern material that i keep with me all the time you know just for reference i went ahead and made that a little smaller in my opinion it made me need to be worked down a little bit more but you can see how big it was for me to put it on camera and then me shaving it down and making it correct a lot smaller that way this can be baited I just wanted to make sure you guys got all the detail information from it being bigger and uh, as you can see that constrictor knot is not gonna slip there's no way that's coming off fish can fight that as much as they can and it's gonna take a pretty big fish to break this mariner's bake line so that's more of the correct size and diameter that I would want all right guys what you're looking at right now is my sewing kit and this doesn't leave my body actually this stays in my hip pack i always carry one of these and there's multitude of reasons not only just for repair lots of other reasons and one of the big things that i keep in here is safety pins you know if you're sewing anything you're going to need safety pins to keep it in place for a little bit but these safety pins I can't tell you how many applications they have. I mean, I, there's a ton. So we're going to break some of these out and show you some of the applications that I use them for. All right, guys, well, I hope you can see those there. I'm not really too sure if you can or not. Hopefully this comes out really good. So what I got out is my multi-tool. And if, you're, uh, if you don't have this one, you're going to have a really hard time replicating what I'm getting ready to do. But let's take the biggest safety pin here to start out with. And what I'm going to do is open it up just like this. And then straighten it out. Kind of as much as possible. Without poking myself if I can. One reason why I don't like sewing so much because I always poke myself. Uh, all right, so that's fairly opened. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back here and I'm going to clip this off with my multi-tool right about there and save that other end. So kind of get in there and clip it so it saves it. And that's what we're left with right there. All right, so all I've done is tied a piece of line to that little eye that's in the safety pin, just like that. And this works just like a gorge that we just made. What you wanna make sure is, I wanna keep this on this background so you can see it. So what you wanna make sure is that this point comes up and follows your line just like this. And I like these because you can bait smaller things with this you know, smaller worms and things like that, as long as they slide up over that eye and get onto the other side where the line is in contour with the, your bait. 
just like this and then again when something grabs a hold of this it swallows it and then yanks against your set or you yank against it it inverts oh, get that in frame it flips around inside of them and they're caught just like that so that's a simple gorge out of a safety pin So some of the other things that you can do with safety pins is getting three of them, and I always carry a lot of them with me, honestly. Get three of them, and you can make basically a, uh, a treble hook out of them, or you know some kind of a, a drag gig, sink gig, whatever people want to call them. That's not too hard to make. Just open three safety pins just like this. Ah, my third one's a little small, sorry, right. no big deal. All right, all you gotta do is line up the eyes of these safety pins, and then, it's kinda cantankerous to do this. Line up the eyes of these safety pins, and then turn them. Flip them around where you need to. And then tie those eyes. And once you tie the eyes, you can flip them around a little bit better. And then what you're going to end up with is a treble hook. Just like that. Whoop, get in frame. So you got to tie these up. And then you can drag the bottom. You know, maybe if you see a catfish, a big catfish, summertime, you can drag the bottom, get underneath his belly, grab him. A very, very completely illegal way to fish, guys. But if your life is at stake, you do what's necessary. But I don't want to tie these up because I have a couple other things I want to show you with these safety pins. I guess I should have thought about this a little earlier, but I have this cotton here that'll give some contrast to this. All right, so now what we're doing is we're gonna straighten this back out. Just like that. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our multi-tool and we're just gonna put a bend in this, just like that. And that's what we end up with. Hopefully you can kind of tell what's going on there. And now what I can use this for is for guides for a primitive fishing pole some of the things that happen when you make you know you just make a cane pole but if you want something that's actually going to cast out a little bit you can make this and then lash it to the end of a fishing pole and then you have a little guide for your line Oop, uh, not in focus So like I said, all you gotta do is either duct tape, I've duct taped these before even, just duct tape them right here to the end of whatever cane pole or stick pole you're trying to use. And that way it gives you a little bit of leeway to get a little cast going on. All right guys, well it's just a couple things that I showed you with those safety pins, I don't know, three or four things that I showed you. And you know, the fishing gorge that I showed you as well. Uh, I wanted to show you how to make that primitive fishing, you know, the gorge first and then show you how to do it with safety pins. You know what I mean? Because the safety pins aren't going to catch really huge fish. They can bend, it's possible. Um, if they get stuck in, sometimes they won't bend. But if they get pushed against a bone, sometimes they'll bend and pop out. It happens. Smaller fish, um, you know, I've caught, I've actually caught two or three pound bass on those, those safety pins before. Bigger catfish, it's not gonna happen. 
Um, but the wooden gorges, I've caught huge catfish on those things. You know, they, they swallow the gorge and it gets into their guts, you know, and it's not coming out. It's, you're gonna catch that fish. The only way you're not gonna catch that fish is if the line breaks. So, you know, there's hundreds and hundreds of applications for these safety pins and just, it's a great thing to keep with you. Not only does it help you in mending your clothes and, and repairing things, there's thousands of applications for these things. So it's just awesome to have them. I always have them with me. I always keep them in my sewing kits. So, thanks. All right, guys, well, this has been William Myers from Mass Outdoors. I hope you enjoyed watching this video. For some more of our previous videos, they're over in the boxes playing right now to my left. There's also a subscribe button over there, and if you haven't done so already, I appreciate it if you click subscribe. You can stay up to date with me and what's going on with the videos by going to www.facebook.com forward slash Manus Outdoors. By going to www.manusoutdoorsllc.com, you can stay up to date with the videos, you can read my articles and other blogs that I write, you can also shop in the store, get some beeswax candles and some other things that are coming to the site very soon. So, appreciate all your views, comments, and support, and hopefully, we'll see you out in the woods. All right, so let's see. You, let me go. Three, two, one. All right, guys. So that's pretty much the primitive gorge, and I have some uh, tips and tricks for you. I'm on a little three. Hey, how you guys doing? This is William Myers, Mass Outdoors, and yes, it's that cold out. <laughs>